Welcome on into the Wolverine Recruiting Show. Clayton Safey here with EJ Holland and Tim Verghese. Brought to you here by Lewis Jewelers. Uh, $1 gets you an entire year at thewolverine.com, so go and do that right now. You can get all of our premium coverage. Uh, but, fellas, let's get into a couple topics here. Uh, the latest surrounding Michigan football recruiting, and that starts with Jim Harbaugh on the road. We talked about it a little bit last week. He made that swing through the south. He also uh, swung through the DMV, hitting some local stops, it looks like, here in the uh, days as of late here. We, I saw him with Ron Bellamy, Steve Klinkscale, a uh, picture of them on Twitter at Detroit King. Uh, so he's continuing to, uh, you know, pretty much blitz the country and uh, head over to schools and, uh, you know, get his face out there. EJ, what's the latest on Jim Harbaugh and his endeavors on the trail? Yeah, so he has been uh, hitting the road hard yet again, despite the NFL rumors, so feel like we're talking about this every week and Jim Harbaugh is handling it, you know, as business as usual. So like you said, he stopped by locally yesterday, <clears throat> made some local swings, most notably Detroit King to see elite quarterback target Dante Moore, who is the big fish this cycle, the top overall priority in 2023. So I think it was good for Harbaugh to make another stop at King. He was there in the fall. He saw Dante play. I believe you were at that game, Clay. So, you know, he's been there quite a bit. Bellamy's been there quite a bit. Clink's been there quite a bit. Matt Weiss has been there quite a bit. So it feels like they just kind of rotate who goes to King on a weekly basis. But they're trying to show Dante that, you know, he's the guy. He is the the one they want. He's basically the only quarterback they're really in it for right now. I guess they dished out an offer to Arch Manning. But for the most part, you Never know, know, it is – Dante Moore. <laughs> it is Dante Moore. So Harbaugh making that big stop. Um, and then he went out to Illinois. So close to me at just outside of Chicago land. He was here this morning seeing top 2023 20, defensive back target Jair Hill, who actually isn't ranked on on three, but is one of Michigan's biggest overall targets on the defensive side of the ball. Six foot three, 180 pounder. Uh, likely to play safety at the next level, can play corner, do a little bit of everything in the secondary. And he's a, a junior and Olympian in the 200 meters. So he has speed, he can hit, he's uh, everything you want in a versatile option in the defensive backfield. So stop by to see Hill. And then tomorrow he'll be heading down to the great state of Texas. So from Chicago to Dallas, the trip that I make pretty often, uh, Harbaugh is doing tomorrow. And he'll uh, be making a stop to see top 2022 target, Andrew Paul. So, you know, while the focus has now shifted over to 2023, there's still a few 2022 targets left on the board, Andrew Paul being one of them. And Tim will kind of share the latest on his recruitment here uh, when we move on from me. But other than Paul, he'll uh, check out some edge rushers like Anthony James on 300 prospect who's committed to Texas A&M but is from Flint and has visited Michigan and is going to visit Michigan again. You'll see Trey Wilson at Lakeview Centennial, which is the same high school that produced Ike Iwona um, in the 2021 cycle. So he'll make some other stops, see some other key underclassmen around the Dallas area. Uh, it, again, shows that Harbaugh is hitting the road hard to go from you know Michigan to Illinois down to Dallas. I think it, it shows that he's – still putting in full effort on the recruiting trail despite all the rumors definitely uh ej mentioned it there tim what's the latest with andrew paul the three-star running back out of dallas and uh michigan's chances here as they try to uh close there um you want to just start from your from you yeah, using you can, it again you can just go yeah okay cool um yeah i mean so uh michigan hosted andrew paul on an official visit last weekend um and by all accounts, the visit went really well. This past weekend, uh, Paul actually visited Clemson, and uh, there was buzz on Friday ahead of the visit that uh, Paul was going to try and shut things down while while on his visit. And then on Sunday night, or early Sunday night, Georgia offered, which kind of threw a new wrench in this recruitment. Um, as it stands regarding Michigan, I think things are trending away from Michigan at this point between Georgia and Clemson and some of the other schools really involved. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is expected, like EJ said, to visit Paul. So, you know, maybe the Michigan staff doesn't think they're fully out of it just yet um, and they can make up some ground. But, you know, we're getting into the lap final stretch here uh, with signing day a little over a week away now. Um, so, you know, this, this is kind of getting down to the last stretch of this recruitment. But 
Um, yeah, I think Clemson and Georgia are really the two schools to watch right now. I think he is expected to probably make a last-minute Georgia visit here this coming weekend after landing that offer yesterday or on Sunday. Um, so that those are the two schools to watch for now. Uh, Notre Dame's obviously still in it, a couple other schools. TCU, I think, is a school that's in it in state that, you know, could be a sleeper school to watch or a couple other sleepers, I think, to watch that recruitment. But, yeah, this this doesn't feel like it's trending in the right direction for Michigan. And, and in my opinion, I don't think that's a huge deal. Michigan landed a running back in C.J. Stowe's. They have Donovan Edwards. They're going after two or three guys in the 2023 class. So this isn't a massive, massive loss, especially when you're comparing it to, like, Clemson needs a running back. You know, running back at, uh, like, Georgia, for example, a school that's known for running backs, they've only signed one in the last two cycles, I believe. Um, and so, you know, they there are some running back heavy school, not, schools in need of running backs after him. Uh, whereas Michigan is in a pretty good spot at the running back position, and this isn't a huge loss. You mentioned, you know, I feel like it's pretty quiet on this front, especially from a Michigan standpoint, but signing day being next week, the 2022 class almost officially coming to an end here. On three, releasing their final on 300 from the 2022 class. You had Will Johnson as the highest guy, the lone five-star in the class at number 31. You had six guys in the top 101, nine guys, I believe, in the top 300. Uh, so those new rankings coming out. I know, EJ, you provided a really in-depth thoughts piece uh, on, you know, where things stand and, and, you know, where you stand on uh, how each guy was rated and, uh, you know, guys that moved up, guys that moved down and all that. But uh, we'll get both of your guys' takeaways, starting with you, EJ, on the new rankings that On3 came out with the other day. And if you want to find those, it's right there on uh, On3.com. And when we'll put it in the description. The the two biggest takeaways that I had was one, Will Johnson got his fifth star back. I guess he never had a five star rating to begin with at on three, but he was a five star across the board elsewhere. So he's now a full on consensus across the board, five star uh, on three rating him as the number one, number 31 overall prospect in the country, which Will is very deserving. I mean, again, he's a five star everywhere else. He had a really, really good week at Under Armour in Orlando from various people that I talked to. Our national staff was obviously impressed with what he was able to do out there against premier competition. Look, the knock on Will has always been he doesn't have this elite speed. But again, he took the Gross Point South track team to the, to the state meet in, in a couple of relay events. And he's a guy that's just so elite from a size standpoint, being six foot three. 195 pounds. He's so long. He's very technical. He's very football savvy. I think he's going to make an immediate impact as a true freshman at Michigan. And number 31 in the country still might be a little too low for Will. I think he's a top 20 type prospect, maybe even top 10 type prospect. If he did have those verified times, I think he would easily be in the top 10 across the board. But overall, just you know, very deserving for Will. I know he was happy about it. He texted me uh, after the rankings came out yesterday and was excited that he was, uh, you know, five star on on three. He also got a big bump on some of the other sites. And now he said he's putting his head down and, and getting ready to put in nothing but work at Michigan. The recruiting process for him with these final rankings releases now completely over. So he's he's excited to get to work and make that immediate impact. But uh, aside from Will getting the fifth star, to me, it was just interesting that there were uh, there was a big drop in Zeke Barry and a couple of weird movements where there were big drops or uh, big rises just based on kind of nothing new. Uh, but Zeke Barry dropping 100 spots to me was very criminal. He's a guy that was named the All-American Bowl Defensive Player of the Year. His senior film hasn't changed. He was outstanding when I saw him in-game. He was a guy that really rose in the on three rankings uh, a couple of months ago. And like I said, nothing's really changed there. So to me, it's really uh, a travesty that Zeke Barry dropped that many spots. I mean, he did nothing wrong. He didn't get to participate in the All-American Bowl because of uh, COVID. He actually uh, ended up having COVID, as did Darius Clemens, who also tumbled like 30 spots. But I think the, the drop of Zeke Barry was completely unwarranted and so that that was one of the the bigger disappointments of the rankings release tim what stood out from uh your standpoint with the the new rankings yeah for me i think the big one was Derek moore um he had a massive week at the under armor all-american game and built upon a really strong senior season 
and jumped all the way from 167 to the number 55 player in the country. Um, and that about checks out with what, uh, you know, Michigan added him really late to the class. He didn't commit until National Signing Day uh, after being a longtime Oklahoma commit. Um, and, you know, when Michigan's need at, at edge, you know, it, it's looking more and more promising that Moore can be the type of guy that can contribute really early in his Michigan career. Um, so that was impressive to see um, just his rise after, you know, like a well-deserved rise after, uh, you know, a strong senior season in All-American performance. And then the other one is Jimmy Rolder. I mean, just what a story. Jimmy Rolder wasn't on any recruiting radars back in like August and September. And uh, now he is the number 59 player in the country, which is just absurd. Um, no offers, like even just five, six months ago. And now, you know, number 59 player in the country committed to Michigan. This, you know, this just further, you know, this is an impressive win for Michigan on the recruiting trail just to beat out Ohio State, Iowa, Wisconsin, some of those other schools just straight up for this type of talent. Um, and, you know, now he's even ranked even higher than he was uh, when, when Michigan beat out some of those other schools for him. Yeah, no doubt. Impressive stuff for both those guys. Yeah, Jimmy Rolder, not on the radar. Then Michigan's able to beat Ohio State for him, uh, you know, and could impact early on in his career as well. Uh, that is our show for today. Remember to join us at thewolverine.com. Just a dollar gets you an entire year subscription. That offer will not last forever, so take advantage right now.